So one of the questions a lot of us have been asking since the launch of James Webb Telescope is how exactly is it going to handle the collisions with various micrometeorites, especially because it's going to be staying in space without any ability to repair this telescope for several years and very likely up to several decades, or at least one decade. In other words, the question is what happens when one of the micrometeorites strikes the mirrors or hits some other essential part of the telescope? Is the mission going to be over? Well, obviously the answer to that question is no, but there is a more specific answer to this that we're going to be talking about in this video because, as you might have heard already, it just happened. A slightly larger than average micrometeorite officially hit one of the main mirrors on the telescope. But what you might have not heard yet is that this is not the first time it happened since the launch. This is actually the fifth time it happened, and the first four collisions were not really that major. And so in this video I wanted to talk a little bit more about the details behind what happened, what all of this means, and more importantly what we know about these micro-collisions or micrometeorite collisions from the previous important missions such as Hubble, which as you can probably imagine received so many more collisions over the period of about 30 years. And this is exactly where we're going to start, the iconic Hubble telescope. The telescope that changed everything. And you might already be aware that in the beginning when the Hubble just started operating, NASA performed several so-called Hubble servicing missions in order to replace some of the parts on the telescope that were either aging or were outdated or maybe even broken. And as they were doing so, they actually ended up bringing some of the parts back to planet Earth to be studied in more detail. And even in the first few years of its existence, when the space around the planet was not really that crowded yet, Hubble has already accumulated quite a lot of different impact craters from various collisions. So for example, in 1993, approximately three years after the original launch, the solar panels here had to be replaced because of the unusual temperature fluctuation they were causing to the telescope. And the fun fact is that the solar panels were the contribution from the European Space Agency and were actually then returned to the ESA for further study once they were retrieved from the Hubble telescope. And this was actually the first opportunity in history of space exploration to see the kind of impacts that would occur on any spacecraft after about two years orbiting planet Earth. And here they found hundreds of impact craters on just a small section of the solar array. Some of them were extremely tiny, only microns in size, but some of them were relatively large, approximately several millimeters. Then nine years later, solar panels were replaced yet again, returned to planet Earth, and once again, even more impact craters were found here as well. This particular solar panel is actually on the display in the Netherlands inside the ESA's technology center known as ESTAC. But in this case, the scientists also wanted to find out where exactly the impact craters came from. Was it from micrometeorites? Was it from some kind of a human-made uh, debris? Or was it from something else entirely? In other words, they also decided to conduct a chemical analysis on every single one of these collisions. And they did so by looking at whatever was unusual present inside the impact craters that should not have been there and that probably came from something else. And so for a lot of these uh, impact craters, the fragments inside were from micrometeorites. It was because of things like iron and nickel. But some of them also contained aluminium and oxygen, which very likely came from human activity, essentially from various solid rocket motors or from various space debris. And considering the amount of debris that's orbiting the planet, it should not really come as a surprise. And here the team even went as far as matching the shape and size of various craters to actual models of rockets that were responsible for producing the debris. But obviously, even after 30 years of the collisions here, the Hubble telescope is still operating and still producing all of the imagery we have today. In other words, the scientists have definitively established that these collisions, these micrometeorites, even though they do cause occasional problems, are not going to be causing any major faults in a telescope or are going to be the reason for the mission failure. Although they do cause a kind of a gradual degradation in the amount of power the solar panels can provide and also the gradual declination in the quality of images, but in this case some of this can be actually restored with software. Although interestingly enough, in the last decade or so, the amount of debris has obviously increased dramatically, and the chance for a collision has gone from approximately 0.15% chance per year to approximately 0.3% per day, increasing by about 700 times. Okay, but that's collisions on the Hubble telescope. What about James Webb? I mean, we know that the solar panels should be okay over time, but how about the other parts, the shield or the telescope mirrors which in this case are directly exposed to open space. 
Well, first of all, we have to remember that because this particular telescope is not orbiting the planet, but is actually in the Lagrange 2 point, it's pretty far away from any human-made debris, and because of this, the chance of a collision here is pretty low overall. On top of this, in this region, it's also not going to be receiving a lot of micrometeorites, which usually tend to approach planet Earth, simply because it's the largest gravitational body in this area. But more importantly, these mirrors were specifically designed to withstand impacts from some of the smaller micrometeoroids. Although over time, it's very likely that the appearance of these mirrors is going to become a little bit more rough, reducing in the overall reflectivity and also becoming a little bit more rugged as well. But for the first few years, all of these imperfections can be easily corrected digitally, and also because when the mirrors were originally designed, they were created to be even smoother than they should have been. In other words, the actual telescope does not have to be as perfect as it currently is. It can still operate even if the mirrors are slightly scratched. And so today, the models suggest that it will probably take at least a few years before any of this becomes a significant problem. And since the original launch a few months ago, there have already been four smaller measurable micrometeoroid strikes, with all of them directly meeting the expectations and the mathematical models. However, the most recent fifth collision was a little bit larger than the predictions and the original assumptions. And so because of this, the scientists behind the mission have to crunch a few numbers and develop future techniques for when this happens again. At the moment though, this is definitely not a problem and is not going to cause any issues for future observations. And so in this case, the mission is still a go and it's still going to be performing way beyond our expectations. And the recent measurements, just from a few days ago, suggested that all of the components on the telescope are still performing way beyond expectations and technically even exceed the original expectations the scientists had for this mission. And since the telescope has already been in space for, I guess, half a year, receiving only five collisions is actually good news. It means that maybe these will be a lot less common than the scientists thought. There's actually a really good article by NASA that you can find in the description below that sort of goes through very common questions about the resiliency of this telescope and how likely the mirrors are to survive a lot of different types of collisions from various micrometeorites. With the scientists here even explaining different techniques that were used to test the mirrors and how everything on the telescope was engineered to withstand a lot of different types of damage and a lot of bombardment from various objects. And one of the ways that all of this will be done in the future when there's a lot of damage on the telescope is going to be by adjusting the position of certain segments and thus canceling out the portion of distortions coming from the damaged parts. In other words, there's a physical way in which the scientists are going to be able to try to counteract the damage to certain mirrors. And this has already been done for the recently damaged segment known as C3. And when it comes to more dramatic events such as meteor showers, the team in this case can also prevent the further damage by conducting certain protective maneuvers. So for example, by turning the optics away from known meteor showers before they occur. Although the most recent collision was not from a meteor shower, it was one of those events that just happens by chance. And one of the other things that the scientists are hoping to learn from all of this is actually in regards to these collisions. By keeping the James Webb telescope in this position for several years, it sort of turns the telescope into a kind of a highly sensitive detector of various micrometeorites, which can also help us learn a little bit more about the micrometeorite condition in these environments and also teach us a little bit more about the collisions as we become interplanetary species and as we start launching missions to, for example, Mars. And so it will definitely help the scientists measure the overall effect of micrometeorite collisions for various other objects and various other telescopes, especially in the region known as the Lagrange 2 point, something that has never really been measured before by previous missions. And so at least for now, that's kind of all we know. We know that the James Webb seems to be operating normally, we know that it's going to be releasing its first images on July 12th, and we also know that the mission seems to be a go and nothing seems to be broken and will probably stay normal for many years to come. In this case, the entire telescope was definitely engineered and designed to withstand a lot of different damage. But once more news comes out and once we learn something else, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.